Hey guys, I'm Kaylin. Welcome back to Fable Hill Farm. Today I'm going to be talking parasites with you guys. Parasites specifically as they relate to my Nigerian dwarf goat herd. Now goats always have parasites and um, uh, you know some level of parasites is normal but uh, you certainly want to know uh, what kind of parasites they have. You fell! <laughs> so this is the secret to my natural coccidia treatment. We are enjoying the sunshine, aren't we girls? So if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, welcome back. Thanks for watching, you guys. Um, if you are new, you might not know it, but I have a small herd of American Dairy Goat Association registered Nigerian dwarf goats. At present, I have three does, one of which is bred, and that is this uh, buckskin and white doe over here, Sunny. Sunny is due May 5th, and she is bred to our buck Templeton. Now we have the three does and then we have one buck who is a registered breeding buck and then we have one buck who is a meat uh, companion for Templeton. He is destined to be turned into sausage and the like but we can get another buck or weather at the time. A weather is a neutered or castrated male goat so we got this uh, stinky fellow who is Templeton's companion. So in total, I've got five goats right now. I've got um, a new buck that's going to be coming here soon. We've got a, a couple new additions that we're excited to announce here in the future upcoming months. And we've got uh, the two stinky boys over there. So we've got five goats. We've got one pregnant doe, Sunny. And uh, we're going to be talking about parasites. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with chemical treatments or a more, you know, traditional approach to raising goats. And I'm not knocking anyone who does that. There are, as they say, a lot of ways to skin a cat. And I just choose to do things holistically because I have a background in natural health for almost 10 years professionally. And it's just something that really resonates with who I am and my beliefs and trying to do things as naturally as possible. I try to do that with my own health, with my family's health and with my animal's health. So that just made sense when I got goats. I knew from the beginning that I wanted to raise them as holistically as possible. When I did my fecals and I sent it off to Meadow Mist Labs, which is actually located in Michigan. That's where I am in West Michigan and Meadow Mist is a Nigerian dwarf breeder actually. And uh, she has her own lab service and it's really affordable uh, for the standard fecal. It was only $6 a sample. So it was very worth it for me to send those off and uh, just to get an idea of what's going on with everyone with their parasite load. It's good to check and Sunny being the pregnant doe and being the immune compromised doe, um, you know, she was one that I definitely wanted to keep an eye on. Lo and behold, Sunny had an increased coccidia count. Now, coccidia is a parasite that goats um, get, um, and it's very um, deadly to kids. And that's something, you know, coccidia treatment and prevention. I'll be talking about more as Sunny kids, and we get into that season of things here on our farm. But um, after six months of age, goats uh, basically build up an immunity to coccidia. And Sunny, with being pregnant, with not being able to be on the uh, natural herbal wormers that I use because of her pregnancy, it makes those wormers uh, Molly's herbals. And I have that link down below. Um, they're not safe for pregnancy. And so I've been doing some other things with her, including using GI Soother which is a product I have linked down below as well. And pumpkin seeds, which can be a natural um, parasite preventative tool and pine needles, as well as some different um, homeopathics and things and, and some different herbs, garlic, for example, um, that I've been using to help to control parasites. So what I did to treat coccidia with my goats was at the recommendation of my goat mentor, Stacy. Again, it's so important that you have a mentor, especially one that's local to you, who you can really bond with and is going to be a great local resource for you. So Sunny, our pregnant doe here, 
is the one who actually had the highest parasite load, which is not remotely surprising because if you've been with my channel for any amount of time, I'm sure you've heard me mention, Sunny is my more immunologically challenged doe or immune compromised doe as I have referred to her as. And she just was a less hardy kid, less hardy than Finkel and Idy, who both came from the same farm. Idy and Finkel are from my mentor, Stacy, over at Hundaholes, and I'll link her farm down below. And Stacy does a lot of um, more naturally minded preventative things. Uh, she does use, you know, chemicals as needed, but she is big into data, including looking at fecals and parasite loads and treating appropriately. And Sunny just comes from a more traditionally managed herd and it's not anything wrong with that for some people that works really, really well, but because I want to manage my animals holistically and Sunny did not come from genetics or from a herd management background where she was managed holistically by me not doing the chemicals with her um, it put her at a disadvantage if she had been in a different herd i think she wouldn't have struggled but because i chose to do things holistically with her i have had more of an uphill battle so to speak in uh, managing her holistically because she just wasn't bred for that and we'll see in subsequent generations. I, you know, hope sincerely to get some daughters out of her if I can change the course, so to speak, of the immune systems and the parasite um, hardiness in her daughters through bringing in other genetics that are uh, more accustomed to uh, a naturally minded herd management style. So this is the secret to my natural coccidia treatment. So this is a product called GI Soother, which is made by Fur Meadow. And I always have this link down below because it's a product that I use very frequently with my goats. It's something that I love. It's something that was recommended to me strongly by my goat mentor when I started out with goats. Again, so important that you have a local goat mentor or even better, more than one mentor that can help you out, be a resource, somebody you can call in an emergency or call when you have questions, someone who knows your area, who knows the feed and mineral issues in your area and can just help you with so, so many things. Hands on, if you're a visual learner like me, it's so, so helpful to be able to see something in person, whether see a goat ultrasounded, see hooves be trimmed, see a goat be milked, milk a goat before you ever do those things. So get a local mentor, that's so important. So GI Soother is a blend of different herbs like cayenne and cinnamon, and I think it has ginger in it, uh, clove, mullein, slippery elm, and this is a great, great, natural treatment for coccidia. Again, I'm not a vet. Let me put my warning in here. Boom. Now I'm not a veterinarian, so anything that I'm talking about is not to be taken as medical advice. You should definitely consult a veterinarian. You should consult your goat mentor. You should do lots and lots of your own research before attempting, you know, anything as far as natural or chemical treatments of your animals. Just bear in mind that I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm just telling you what I do and what works well for me. What I did with the GI Soother at the recommendation of my mentor was I drenched it using a drenching gun to my goats, including Sunny, my pregnant doe. This is safe for pregnant goats. And of course, do your research, read the uh, labels and stuff from Fur Meadow directly before you use this, just so you understand how to use it safely and more importantly, effectively because this is, I think, across the board, pretty safe for goats, but using it effectively is very important. There's no point in having uh, these tools in your arsenal if you don't know how to properly use them and administer them in the right schedule, the right timing, the right frequency, the right dose, so that you're actually effectively treating parasites. So GI Soother, which can be a great coccidia prevention for kids, can also be used in higher doses to treat and kill coccidia. So I drenched the goats twice a day for five days. I did the does first. I got a couple of days into treating the does and then I started treating the bucks. 
just worked out with my husband's schedule and him being home because it's a little bit of extra time in the morning and time in the evening. And with having a one and a half year old daughter and being a stay at home mom and staying super busy with the farm and with our toddler, um, adding anything extra into the day uh, just takes a little bit more uh, finesse and finagling and juggling. And I'm already such a juggler and I wear so many hats around here. So having my husband home for a couple of extra days to help out made it just more logical for me to also go ahead and start treating the bucks. So two birds, one stone kind of a thing. So I treated all the goats twice a day for five days. And then my mentor's recommendation was to continue can't talk. My mentor's recommendation was then to continue the GI soother treatments twice a week. Even though my bucks didn't have the same level of coccidia as my does, it was recommended by my mentor that I go ahead and treat the bucks. And that makes sense because at some point, you know, all of your animals on your property are going to come into contact with the same parasites. So if my does had coccidia, whether it came in off my boot or it came in through, you know, them coming into contact with each other through breathing season or through things like rotational grazing, sharing the same space, even if not at the same time, um, your animals are going to come into contact with the same parasites. So it just made sense. And again, that was recommended to me to treat the bucks, even though they didn't have the same levels of coccidia. So that's what I did. I treated my bucks. I treated my does. I did the five day regimen and I will be continuing with the follow up treatment. And I'm still continuing all of my other parasite preventatives, as I've mentioned before, the Molly's herbals, herbal dewormer that I use, as well as pumpkin seeds and pine needles and oregano oil. I use a ton of oregano oil with all of my livestock and I talk a lot about that. I'll link a couple videos down below where I've talked about some of my natural parasite management tools. Um, so you can check those out if you're interested. So one thing that I'm going to be uh, shooting for this year is to actually purchase a microscope. So that way I can do my own fecals. And what that will allow me to do is not only to regularly check the parasite load in my animals and to treat accordingly, but it will allow me to do something which I am so, so excited to have the option of doing and the ability to do. Freaking goats. They had just, oh, quit that, think. <laughs> Look at Sunny. Hey, Sunny girl. Snow on her face. As I was saying, sorry. Got distracted by goats. If you have goats, you know that happens a lot. What that microscope will actually allow me to do is to check how the different natural methods that I'm using, such as the mollies or the GI soother or oregano oil or pumpkin seeds or pine needles, I can actually check and quantify and have the real hard scientific proof or lack thereof, of how those different natural treatment methods or preventatives are working at reducing and or killing the parasites in my goats. And so that will allow me to not only manage my herd better and to control parasites that much better, but it will allow me to see what tools in my arsenal are working and to worth continuing to invest in and what tools just don't work for my herd or don't work for my area. So I'm really, really excited and really uh, hoping to purchase a microscope this year so that I can um, run my own fecals. I say our, I say we, my husband and I are a team when it comes to the farm, but he is not doing fecals with the goats and he really isn't that interested in the goats but he's super supportive and I appreciate that honey if you're watching this video. Well from all of us here at Fable Hill Farm thank you guys for watching. If you are new to my channel and you're interested in learning more about goats whether showing goats, milking goats, milk testing um, or just goats in general make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when I post new videos. I will see you guys around. I'll catch you in the next video. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Let me know who you are, what you're up to. Do you have goats? Are you dreaming of goats? GI soother. Hey, Finky. Had to take my uh, face mask thing, face shield, I don't know what you call it, uh, neon orange contraption off. It's just getting a little warm. The sun's coming out. I'm not complaining. <laughs>